on January 23rd, 2022. Cube 1336, I mean 30, 37. Uh, you got the, got the Minecraft shooting world record. Oh my fucking god, dude! Fucking, oh my fucking god, dude! Holy shit, dude! Oh my fucking god! Holy fuck, dude! Now, it is January 23rd, 2024. The two year anniversary. If you look on the RSG leaderboards, this was the world record to dethrone. What at the time was the longest standing world record in the history of this category. Since then, it has been beaten by Xylanox, but uh, it took a grand total of like 900 days for that world record, for that longest standing world record, world record to get beaten. So that's really interesting. What else is really interesting, as you see here, Brent Silda recently celebrated his 1,000th day anniversary so um uh, that's pretty that's pretty interesting as well and uh if you can see here cube 1337x is 908 is currently 33rd on the leaderboard which means that 32 runners have gotten better times than him and it doesn't need that this doesn't even take into consideration the fact that most of those runners have multiple sub tens See here, mo most of these runners have multiple sub tens, and that's also not taking into consideration how um there's um there's a bunch of like <clears throat> unverified runs as well that are also faster. Specifically, Kyle's eight forty five, Rainx is eight nineteen, and uh, this one uh is probably getting verified soon, so I'm not gonna say it counts. Um, uh, but yeah, so now that's the history. Let's look at the overview of this run and, uh, you know, see what has changed since, since this run. This run starts with him, uh, using a wall. Now, the thing that's changed after this, uh, for the wall is that, uh, the introduction of, uh, world preview, right? World preview allows speedrunners to reset much faster and yeah, much more efficiently. This is something that a lot of runners don't do also nowadays. Because of standard settings and the fact that every single runner virtually only goes for buried treasure nowadays, they're not going to check at full range distance for random buried treasure on an island with no trees. This is a reset efficiency decision that only runners back then would have made. And uh, he sees no buried treasure, but he sees a shipwreck. Now, this kind of makes up for the fact that there's no wood, because the shipwreck has wood. But uh, right here, runners today would have probably already reset, like, three times already. Right? You don't just play a no-food shipwreck anymore, just because it has a bunch of iron. I don't know what you do anymore. So, this run is already in like old people territory as soon as it begins. And it's also really slow crafting by today's standards. Back then, this was like good crafting. But today, like runners are way, way faster at crafting. Like top runners, they, they know what they're doing. Fast ends. They're the most important one, so. And this is this just like standard Magma Ravine going to the Magma Ravine. This, I don't think, has changed that much since then. Portals, I guess, up at that. Oh, and fights, I guess, as well. Best in Sand one cycle. Just simple portal building. This is pretty slow by today's standards, but uh, I mean, this is just portal building. Like every mechanic doesn't get way faster as like time progresses on, right? That's just kind of how it goes. 
But right here, he loads in a Bastion. This is also pretty standard. We still do this to this day. So. But he has to spend a long time getting out of this ravine, because he spawns in a ravine. Now, uh, he tries to run through this, uh, okay, his long. lava. We don't do that. This game does not want me to leave. What this the is fuck? just like... I, this is pretty slow terrain navigation. Uh, so this could definitely be improved upon. And runners today, like they know they know how to terrain nav a lot better. You get wood early, which is also something that you don't really do nowadays. But like once again, this is some pretty slow terrain navigation it's to get slow. to the bastion. It's, it's like, like the the, okay. the like it's actually pretty shocking to see like so this slowly, like I top know. runners back know. then. Had like this type of mechanics. Now I'm like, cause I haven't seen this run in a while, right? Personally, so like this is kind of this is really interesting to see. Actually, he gets to the bastion right right about now. Pretty simple. Uh, Bridge route. Don't you, know, you mind the chalice? Oh my God, and he's gonna kill the hoglin. He doesn't kill the hoglin. While waiting for it, I guess. Aww. I remember he kills the hoglin, but uh, I think it was the hoglin like in the t crimson terrain up there. Can I play some mine? Runners nowadays don't mind those blocks. They just simply go into the rampart and they don't they don't go down either. They do the top route more. Personally I like to do the bottom route because you take no damage. But uh, uh, the top route oh, is fuck, slightly right. faster. Did that go in the wrong place? And the, the top route actually existed when uh, Cube when Cube got this world record. Except like it wasn't really like widely used and also the terrain was kinda of bad for it. So that's why he just used the bottom route. This hoglin needs to And also he realizes he needs food, so now he goes and kills a hoglin. Uh you should have probably just like killed the hoglin like on the bridge. I mean obviously that doesn't turn out to be a misplay because there's a hoglin right here. Yeah. But uh, if this hoglin doesn't exist, then that's that's a bad play. To not kill that hogman on the bridge. Stick. Drops four cooked pork chop, which is the maximum amount. Uh, you leave right about now. Spiriters nowadays would probably trade the rest of the gold to hope for a zero cycle, but uh, this is fine. You should kind of just leave right about now. Because right now you have three beds, three, three anchors, which is not really. Like, that's six explosive is like pretty consistently people can spear on, like, people can zero cycle with six explosives. But uh, usually, like, if three of them are anchors, you usually wait for like maybe another oh string trade. Okay, because, like, if you have three anchors, that's just like pretty hard to manipulate. And also, this way of killing the wither skeletons, people don't really use that nowadays anymore. They usually build up in the middle, where they put fire in the middle, because that's more consistently you're you're never gonna get hit if you build in the middle. Or something else that people actually do is they they also just like kind of tower up and just like go over to wither skeletons. But he obviously can't do that here because there's pig because like there's blazes on the bridge that he has to kill. And also, um, something else that he does in this fortress, he lowers his resistance to 5, but usually nowadays, like, the runners would do dynamic resistance, which means they manipulate it up and down, up and down to get more straight blazes. And they also wouldn't block off that, because that's just kind of a, like a 3 second time loss. Don't really do that if you don't see any wither skeletons. Getting really look he's getting really good blaze rays here. 
but uh, this is where like the run gets famous for like the blazes never drop a six rod ever. He has to spend 40 seconds getting the six rod. Like normally, like if you see if you watch like No Fear's World Record, you you just leave with five rods here, right? You don't try to like you don't try to like run around like all these with the skeletons trying to get a six rod and waste 40 seconds while doing so. I think like top runners nowadays would just probably leave on fire at this point. That's also like a like a play he made right here that you wouldn't really normally make today. And this portal building is also really slow by today's standards. I mean, if you're not if you don't have like a sub nine and you're going for world records, that's not really a big deal. Any of these mechanical things, but like if it's like a world record speedrun, it it kind of does. And also with Ninja Brain Bot. Nowadays, the people don't like they don't put like blocks to like to like stop themselves from moving because of Bodai. One eye has become way more consistent. This, for context, this was about only one month after calculators were unbanned. So I don't even think Izu macro existed, right? They, he just had to look really, really closely at the screen. So this is really oh primitive uh, eye measurements. But he still managed to get the one eye perfect travel somehow. So that's really that's really nice. Seven at distance. If you have like food management, you you actually don't eat a pork chop right there. You wait until you get a little bit more hungry first. But it doesn't really matter. I mean your your run is coming to an end. It's not like you're gonna run out of food. But this travel to the second portal is really, really fast. This is still one of the fastest end games we've ever seen. Uh, this end game is definitely not slow at all by today's standards. And the stronghold nav is one of the main reasons why. Right? So, nowadays, of course, we have preemptive, but uh, Cube doesn't in this run. So he kind of just hopes and he actually oh hits the instant nav. Did. So that doesn't, that doesn't lose any time at all over preemptive and uh, if he would have left on five he wouldn't have been able to finish his portal so that's like another thing man. this end layout is actually pretty perfect for zero cycle it's a front dragon on a good tower and uh it's really the end is really open you can pretty easily zero cycle here but uh he doesn't because zero cycles in random seed speedruns were basically unheard of back then. So, he doesn't zero cycle in his run. Um, I don't even think he knew how to zero cycle back then. That's like how new zero cycle was at the time. Um, I think like Ow. only a few people in the world would call themselves like really good at zero cycling. Maybe people like Camo or Crooks, but uh, I think that was about it. So, um, this dragon actually purchased really quickly, and uh, he's able to get the world record. Um, this one cycle is pretty standard. I mean, oh my depends if you want to set up the crystals, I mean set up the anchors, fucking god, but that's dude. about the only change. Fucking, oh my fucking god, dude. Holy shit, dude. Oh my fucking god. Holy fuck, dude. Oh my fucking god. And this iconic reaction. So there's a lot of things in this run that we would just not do today. And I think that's just like a testament to like, this run is two years old. But a lot of the decisions like might have been better in this run than if you would have done them today. Like for example, you definitely leave on five rods after killing all those trade blazes in the fortress. But then you just get punished. Because uh, the stronghold is only a one-eye. So you can so you can never fill out the end portal. And uh, also... Preemptive would probably also lose time here, cause he just hit the instant half. Well, which I mean, like the consistency plays, uh, definitely worked out, and they didn't work out because, like, of course, preemptive doesn't really save time over this run. So overall, wow, man, has it really been two years already? This is the run to this dethrone, the longest standing world record ever back then. Uh, ever since it has been beaten, but uh. 
wow, that was like probably the most iconic world record in the history of this category. And this is the run to beat it, the 908. So this is a pretty legendary run. Uh, Cube 1337 is a legendary person. He recently just came back from like a really long hiatus. So really like really looking forward to what he does like in the future. And that's about it for this video. See you guys maybe for the three year anniversary of Brentilda's 936. I don't really know.